In a couple of your labs, you're going to have to uh, heat a crucible. So let me show you how to set that up. So you get a clamp stand, and then again, you get a ring clamp and clamp it on here. You may already have your Bunsen burner lit, and you may want to test it out before you set your uh, ring clamp. Okay, and make sure that your Bunsen burner gives the right heat at the right height. So this one, for example, right now, it's a little bit lower, okay, over here. So for example, the blue flame inside here, that's a little bit lower than what you would want it to be. So go ahead and remove the Bunsen burner, keep it aside, and please make sure that this is cold and it's still not warm or anything, but if it is, then go ahead, take a paper towel or something, and then lower this down just a little bit. And now it should be all fine, okay? And so then what you will need is you will need a clay triangle, so put that clay triangle in here. And you're never going to touch a crucible except for the first time when you have to fire a crucible. Other than that, you will never touch a crucible with hands because otherwise it loses, um, your, your hands will lose oil on the crucible and will get contaminated. So after the first time, you never use your hands, you will always use the crucible tongs. So depending on what kind of a crucible you have, okay, whether it's the little bit long kind or a little bit fatty kind, it doesn't matter what you have, okay, but you need to have one of the crucibles in there. And then you want to make sure that you take the crucible like this, all right, and make sure you hold it carefully and tightly, and then you can place it on the clay triangle. You want to make sure that it doesn't fall through the clay triangle. So for example, sometimes if you have the very narrow one and the clay triangle is really big, it might actually just fall through, okay? So you have to be careful. Now this crucible, which is the narrow one, you can place like this without any problem. But for the one that was a little bit wide, you may not want to put it like this. Maybe you want to put it at an angle. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Okay, I'm fine with everything so long your uh, base gets heated, okay, properly. Depending on what you're trying to do, so for example, if you're just firing a crucible, you are all set now, okay? So go ahead and place the Bunsen burner underneath your crucible and you're all set to go, okay, as far as the firing is concerned. So right now you can see that the inside cone is right underneath the crucible, which is what you want because you want intense heating usually in a crucible. Depending again on the experiment, in some cases what happens is that you may need to move your Bunsen burner around in order to um, periodically heat the crucible, but in the experiments you are doing here um, in our Gen Chem labs, you will have to heat that continuously like this. When you're done heating for the five minutes, seven minutes that you're required to, at that point, go ahead and turn off the Bunsen burner, remove it, and let the crucible cool like this for a while, or what you can also do is remove the crucible and again hold it like this very carefully. Do not touch anything with your hand at this point because everything is hot. So then you remove the crucible and you can place it either on the uh, clamp stand or you have the wire gauze or you can also use a watch glass. Okay, place it on your stand or wherever and then let it cool for a little while. And then while it's when it's done cooling, then you weigh it. Do not place anything hot on the weighing balance. How do you know if it's cool? You place your hands over it like this. Do not touch anything. And if you feel the heat coming out of it, then it is still warm. Okay, so then let it cool a little bit more and then, um, you know, see again. So right now this is very hot, but this is how you would heat a crucible. Now, if you wanted to heat a crucible, you're doing a reaction, you're done firing, and you wanted to do a reaction, now you may also need to cover the crucible. So again, you have to use a lid for this, okay? And in this case, please be very, very careful because it's very easy to let the lid slip out, okay? And so go ahead and take the lid up and place it very carefully on the crucible, okay? And in some cases, you'll have to cover the lid completely on the crucible. In some cases, you will need to leave just a little bit of open space so you can either get the water out or you get the oxygen in, whatever it is, you may need to leave a little bit space there, okay? So please mind it, and this is kind of typically what happens. So be very careful. I'm gonna remove this for now, and I think I need to tilt this just a little bit. And then when I place my lid, it should be all good. Okay, so be careful. This is a very sensitive thing and so many lids break 
because of this reason and as you can see it's happening right now also okay so be very careful and place the lid carefully right there I think I'm good now okay and so here's a little open space for your uh, for your crucible and then again I know the Bunsen burner is turned off but then go ahead and place the Bunsen burner do the rest of your experiment and you should be good to go